Hey guys and welcome back to another Mansion 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to show you how to do a very basic system in which we can place down objects in real time. So this will be while the player is playing the game they can hold down a button and place down an object. So we're going to be making this today. There won't be kind of a menu to choose between different ones. I'll just show you the main part of placing down an object and rotating it and all that and you can obviously advance upon it to add it into a menu to select other things. And I can do a video on that as well in the future if you'd like. However, We'll go through this one first and then you can see if you'd need it. So I'm going to play to show you what it's going to look like. So we get in, I'm going to go into first person to make it better for us. I'm going to hold down my button, which is 1, and we're going to have it spawn in here. Now the line traces are there just so I can show you what's happening for testing. They wouldn't be there in the actual game. So we can move it around like so. And if we hold down the left mouse button, it's going to rotate as well. So we can rotate it while we're moving it. And so we can move it about where we want to place it. And we can rotate it and then we'll just let go. It will stay there and it will build like that. And this is also a fully functioning blueprint as well once you place it down. So this still works as my drawers, like so. So this is what we're gonna be making today, this build system here, which we can build and rotate and place in objects real time, like so. So let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what we want to do first is we want to set up our material. So the reason I'm doing this is I want it to be slightly transparent before we place it down. So it just makes it easier for the player to understand it isn't placed down yet. So to do that, I'm gonna right click Go to material and I'll name this one transparent matte and open it up straight away. Making this is very simple. All we want to do is in the bottom right under material, we want to change the blend mode from opaque to translucent. Hold down three left click to get a color node like so, plugging that into the base color there. You can set this color to whatever you want, i.e. black, white, or anything. I'm going to set it to be a nice little brown color for my drawers that we have here. So I'm going to set it to brown. Then we'll hold down 1 and left click to get a constant value, plugging that into the opacity. And this is obviously going to be how opaque it is and how see through it is. So I'm going to set this value to be about 0.5. You can set this to whatever you like. The closer to 1 it is, the less see through it is. And the more solid it is, the closer to 0, the more see through. And that is it done. That's our very basic transparent material. So if we hit apply, we should see it up in the top left preview up here. And there you go. Now we have this transparent see through material here. Once we've done that, we're going to save and close this. And then we're going to duplicate our object which we want to place down. So I have my interactable drawers here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and duplicate. And I'll just name this one Temp Drawers BP. Now the reason I'm doing this is just because it's then easier to edit the materials and the collision and everything we need. So it's easier to have our own temporary one and the actual one as well. So that's why I'm doing this. So open it up and then we can just delete all the code in here as we won't need it as this is the temporary one, all we need is essentially the static mesh, except it being a blueprint makes it easier for us. So we'll compile that, go to the viewport, and we're gonna select all of our static meshes here, and I'm gonna change the materials to be our transparent material we just made. So what I'll do is I'll minimize this, select it there, go back in and just change the materials to that, and now you see we have this see-through draw here. What we're also gonna do is select the default scene route and make sure that it is movable. If it is already movable for you, that's great, just make sure this is so we can actually move it when we want to be placing it down. Once you've done that, we can compile, save, and close that as that is also all we need to do in there. Next, let's start setting up the code for actually placing it. So we're gonna be doing this in our character blueprint. So for me, that's content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character, but for you, it's gonna be third, first, or whatever you've named it. And once we're in here, we're just gonna find some empty space down here. Then I'm gonna right click, add a custom event, and I'm gonna name this one update, place location or object location or item anything like that whatever makes most sense for you but this is essentially what we're doing to move the object we want to place down straight after this we're going to hold down d left click to get a delay plug in the duration as 0.01 just so we can actually loop it later on then after this we're going to hold down b left click to get a branch so we know whether or not we want to loop it and for this i'm going to hit the plus variable here naming this one hold lock question mark like so plugging that into the branch. Now I've got hold lock because I'm seeing if I'm holding the button to move it, so holding the location. I've done that instead of just hold because later on I'm going to have a hold rotate as well. So name it whatever makes sense for you, so it could be should loop movement or anything like that, but hold lock makes sense for me. Out of true, so if we do want to loop it, we're going to come out of that, we're going to get a line trace by channel, plugging that in there. And for the start, we want to get our camera, so I'm going to get the first person perspective camera there. This does work in third person as well, but it just looks better in first, as with most things like this. So I'm gonna be doing it from first. Out of this, we're going to get world location. 
and then that will go into the start and it will also go into a vector plus a vector and return value of that vector plus vector will go into the end and the reason we're doing that is to keep it going in a straight line so if we come at the camera again we're going to get the forward vector out of this we're going to get a vector multiplied by a float plugging that into the addition there and this float value is how long the line trace wants to be so how far away you want it to spawn from the player I'm going to set this to be 250 you can set this to be absolutely whatever value you like so 300, 400, anything this is just how far away it is from the player so actually I might up it to 300 like so let's hit compile and that is going to be the first line trace so I'm also going to draw debug type for duration so we can see it working after this I'm going to hold down B left click to get a branch plug in a condition into the return value there off of true so if it does hit something we're going to update the place location which is this custom event we made at the start so if we do hit something we want to start checking again because this one is going straight out in front of the player so if this line trace hits something that means there's something in front of us so we don't want to be able to place the object any further so we're going to check again to see if the player's moved off of false that's where we want to check the other area so that's where we want to then check the floor to see if we can place it on the floor as well so a false we're going to get another line trace by channel like so this time the start is going to be slightly different so for the first line trace here we're going to come out of out hit and get break hit result opening this advanced options here what we're going to do is we're going to get the trace end the trace end we're going to start of the second line trace trace end will also get a vector minus a vector plugging that into the end there and close these options here so what we're doing is essentially we're now just going to be going down to the floor from where this first line trace ended so now that's out in front of the player so we're going to be drawing a kind of right angle in front of the player down to the floor and I'm just going to minus let's say 200 from this you set this as whatever you like so 50 100 200 it just basically means how far you want the player to be able to look up before they can no longer place this or how far down the floor can be from the player so I want it to be 200 units and again I'm going to do for duration and hit compile there after this we're going to hold down B left click to get another branch once again but again the condition being the return value out hit we're again going to break hit result opening the advanced there off of false this time so if this doesn't hit the floor we want to now update the place location because we only want to be able to place the object if this line trace hits the floor because we don't want it to start floating we want to spawn it on the floor and so now to actually find out where the floor is we're going to be using the hit location here or just the location sorry so we're going to be using the location as where it hits is where the floor is and where we want it to spawn so over here we're going to right click and spawn actor from class not plugging that into anything just yet the class is going to be our temporary drawers that we made or your temporary object and the return value we're going to right click promote to variable and name this placed object then up here off of true of this branch we're going to get an is valid node with the input object as this placed object we've just created there is not valid it's going to go into the spawn actor there so we only want to spawn the actor if we haven't already placed it down if we have placed it down already we're going to move it we'll do that code in a minute but essentially if we haven't already placed it we're going to place it the spawn transform we're going to right click split structure pin with the location being the location of this break hit result here so we're spawning it on the floor and the rotation all i want to do is right click get actor rotation so this is the player's rotation right click the return value and split structure pin again plugging the z into the center of this one so we need to right click split structure transform rotation so we can get the z values so this is just going to mean that the object is facing the same direction as the player so it will be facing us so that is spawning in the first object there now what we want to do is that's going to spawn it in but we also now want to move it so that's also very simple so what we're going to do is now off of is valid so we have already spawned it in we're going to come out of placed object here so we can just come out of the set and we're going to set actor location like so plugging that into the is valid not that set down there so i might move this up a bit as well the new location is simply just going to be this location of our break hit result there so wherever the line trace hits that's where our object is going to move to and then out of this we're going to update place location like so and that is all we need to do there because that's going to move it and it's going to loop this so it always moves until we let go and there's still something we need to do down here from where we're spawning it all we need to do out of the placed object we're going to set actor enable collision we're going to untick it so there's no collision on it so it doesn't mess up and you can walk through it stuff like that and then we're going to update player location again so it then loops it so we can start moving it and that is all we need to do to spawn in and move the object 
So I'll show you this working in a second. Let me just neaten this up a little bit just so it looks a little bit nicer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compile, save, and test this out just to show you it working. Although actually there's one other thing we need to do, which is very important. We need to call this. So we've set up actually spawning in and moving the object we want to place, but now we need to call this code as well. So let's do that now. So what we're going to do is down here, we're going to find some empty space and get in the button we want to use to spawn this. So again, you can pick any button you want, or you can come off a widget, so you press a button through that, anything. But for me to test it, I'm just going to right click and get a one keyboard event. And I want to have it, so I'm holding it. So to do that, off of pressed, I'm going to set hold lock to true. And off of released, I'm going to set it to false. So tick and untick, like so. Then off of set hold lock, I'm going to simply update place location so it starts this code and starts moving it and starts this loop as well, because hold lock is true there. And as you can see, when we release it, it's false, so it will stop this code. Off of the set hold lock false, so released, we're going to get is valid again with the input object as our placed object there, because this is going to spawn the actual object now, and we only want to do this if we actually are trying to place one. So we're going to come out of is valid and get a spawn actor from class, with our class now being our actual blueprint. So for me, that's the interactable draws BP. Spawn transform, we're just going to come out of placed object and get actor transform. So this is where our reference one is in the world. And so the transform is its location, rotation, and scale. So we can just plug that straight into spawn transform there, like so. After this, we're going to get the placed object again and destroy actor. So this is the reference we have in the world, which is the transparent one. We're going to get rid of it as we don't need to use it anymore. And then we're also going to set placed object like so. Don't plug anything in there. And that just removes anything which is in here, which is obviously the draws. So we're going to remove it, meaning it is no longer valid. So this won't fire off anymore. So if we compile, save, this should be the spawning in and moving of it working. And then we'll do the rotating afterwards. So minimize, hit play, go into first person. If I hold one, you can see we get this here. We can move it about like so. If I let go, it spawns in. However, you can see, we can't actually rotate it at the moment. So we can spawn it in, however it doesn't rotate because we haven't set that up, but we can spawn it in, move it about, let go, and it spawns in perfectly like so. And you can see this is the line trace. So if I just press one, make the line trace go out and go down like so, working perfectly like that. So this works great. So now let's set up the rotating part. So to do that, we're gonna go back to our character blueprint here. And underneath this, we're just gonna scroll down, find some space, right click and add another custom event. This one I'm going to name rotate object like so. Out of this, we're going to hold down D, left click to get another delay, but again, the duration being very small, i.e. 0.01, just so we can loop it. After this, we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, with the condition as another new boolean we're going to make named hold rotator, or hold rotate like so, plugging that in there. And again, that's the same thing we did with the hold lock, it's just so we know whether we want to keep loopiness, i.e. keep rotating it. Off of true, we're going to get another is valid, with the input object as our placed object there. So we can only rotate the object if we are trying to place it down. Because if we've already placed it down, or we aren't trying to place it down, then we're not going to rotate it. We only do it when we're trying to place it. So is not valid, won't go into anything. Is valid, we're going to move it. So out of the placed object here, we're going to get actor rotation. The return value, we're going to right click and split the structure pin as we only want to rotate it on the Z. So out of the Z, we're going to come out and get a float plus a float. And you can increase this by any value you like, but I found that one is a good value. I tried 0.5 and I tried two, however one seemed perfect. And that's what I was using at the start of the video, but you can increase and decrease this for whatever you like. The higher number, the quicker it'll rotate, the lower number, the slower it'll rotate. And then out of this, we're going to get a greater than or equal to. So a float is greater than or equal to a float. And we're going to set this to 359. We're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, plug in that as a condition, and it going into is valid. And the reason we're doing this is because if it gets to 359 or above, we then want to reset it to zero so it starts the loop again. So it doesn't keep going above 360 because obviously there's only 360 degrees. So we don't want to add this above that as it won't do anything, it will just stop. We want to move it back to the start of zero. So to do that, it's very simple. Off of true, we do want to do that. So we're going to come out of placed object here. I'm going to set actor rotation, like so. I'm going to right click the new rotation, split structure pin, and leave it as it is, plugging that into true of the branch. So if we do reach the limit, we'll loop back round. 
Now you don't need to split the structure pin, but I'm doing it just so it looks nicer with what I'm going to do now. So we're going to duplicate that, so Control C, Control V, plug it into false, make sure the target goes back into the placed object, and now the Z is going to be this return value of the plus one there. So that is now going to rotate the object as well. So now out of this, we're going to right click, call function, rotate object, plug that into there like so, so we loop it as well like that. And again, this is just going to add one to the value to loop it around rotating in a circle. And now to call this, what we're going to do again is right click, get the button you want. For me, I want that to be the left mouse button, but if you this could be R, Q, E, anything you want. Out of pressed, we're going to set hold rotate to be true. So tick it, released, we're going to set it to be false. And then off of the true, so pressed, we're going to call function rotate object. And false, we don't actually need to do anything because it's just going to leave it where it is. So we can compile, save, and we can test this out. So let's hit play. We go in, hold on one, move it. We hold on left click, it's going to rotate, and it should rotate in a full circle like so. So it gets round 360 and it continues going in a circle. So this works perfectly. So we can move it around and rotate it. And when we let go, it stays there and it's going to spawn in like that. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video. As we set up the system, of placing in objects in real time. So we hold down a button, we can have it spawning in, we can move around, it spawns where we want. If we hold left click or any button we want, it then also rotates in a circle as well. We can let go and spawns it in, and these blueprints will still also work perfectly how they should as well. As you see here, this still works great. We can spawn in as many as we want with this system. However, again, you can fully customize this to get it perfect for you to have it off a widget or anything like that and have different objects. Again, if you want more help with stuff like that, let me know, but this is the basic version of just spawning in objects in real time, which was requested quite a bit. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.